Hey everybody, uh, video blog day four. Uh, it's crazy that it's already been four days. I feel like I got here yesterday. Um, things are getting fun now. Not that they weren't before, but now we're all getting to know each other better and we're all having a good time, but working hard too, don't worry. Um, today we started, of course, with morning prayer. And then we spent the morning doing a reflective plenary session on the campaign theme of the past four years, which was called One Human Family, Food for All. The MO behind this theme was to work to end hunger, and we spoke about the campaign as a pretty big success. Over 120 of the 166 member organizations were involved in some action related to this campaign. Uh, for example, Development and Peace is actually in the middle of their education campaign called So Much Love, which is all about promoting small-scale agriculture in order to address hunger, and that's S-O-W, Much Love. Uh, I'll put the link to the campaign's website down below so you can read more about it. There's some really cool stuff in there, so I hope you do check it out. And uh, in the first half of this session, we heard some stories from some member organizations who did take action related to this theme. We saw a really great video from Caritas Panama, who composed a song related to the theme, which got a lot of attention, and I'll post that uh, link below as well, and you should de definitely give that a listen. It's really, really great. Uh, then we heard from Spain, where they led a campaign through the church, where they used global information to inform people in Spain about hunger all over the world. Uh, they said it was the first time that they did that, and they really felt that they were a part of the Universal Church, and that people really started to realize that we need to stand up and say no to hunger, and no to the fact that people aren't the central focus of economies. Uh, then we saw a video about Catholic Charities USA's food program in Maine, where a lot of young people are leaving communities and leaving the elderly to fend for themselves. And this was a good reminder that hunger is also a reality for people living in our own communities back home in North America, and that they have an equal right to food as everyone else in the world. Uh, next up is Monsignor Burton from Caritas Djibouti and Caritas Somalia told us that in Somalia they started a farming project for women. Uh, but still in Somalia, about 10% of the population goes without even having any meals in a day. So the situation there is still pretty serious. In Djibouti, one of the things that they did was organize a celebration meal. And he said that he had never seen so many smiling faces there in one, fa er, there in one place before. And it was a mixture of Christians, Muslims, and non-believers. But he said the key was that it wasn't about feeding the poor. It was about sharing a fraternal meal, and that made a huge difference. And it actually really drove home a message that's come up a few times here, which is that countries in need don't necessarily need money or things like that as like the main, the main important thing. They need solidarity, and they need people to be with them and stand with them and care about them. And that's what a lot of people have been saying. Um, Next up was Tonga, where they organized a food distribution that was actually televised so, and broadcast so that people would know about it. Uh, we also saw an adorable video of little kids from Korea who wrote a song about the campaign. I have no idea what they said, but it was adorable, and I'm sure it was very profound. Um, next, we heard from Burkina Faso, where they de developed a Sahel working group with representation from 20 Caritas organizations that are working on establishing initiatives that promote and protect agriculture that's produced by families, or at least produced locally. Um, next was Guatemala, where they've been lobbying the government to establish laws about food security. Food security meaning that everyone has enough nutritious food to eat. And they told us that in Guatemala, actually still 49% of kids under the age of 5 are malnourished, so they definitely need this campaign there. Then we heard from a representative from Caritas Europa, representing the European members, uh, who told us that they've been trying to influence policies in European countries to end world hunger. And they were able to get European governments to adopt a resolution that says that EU governments need to formally recognize that food is a basic human right. And last but not least, we heard from Nicaragua, 
where they've been helping uh, people themselves to realize that they have a right to food, and especially they've been focusing on women. Uh, then each region presented their ideas of how this campaign should be continued in the future. Africa said that we need to nail down a culture of sharing with the poor to make sure that they always have enough food to eat at all times. Um, South America said that food is a right and because of that it needs to be part of legal frameworks. The Middle East and North Africa uh, pointed out that people trust Caritas there and that everyone there really does want food to reach poorer people. And they said that not everyone there is rich, but they are all sensitive and generous. Uh, North America talked about continuing our initiatives to support the hungry at home and abroad. In Europe, they plan to continue to influence national government policies about food and food security all over the world. And then in Oceania, they said that they want to be able to support not just more food, but the right nutritious food. Then we had a short break and came back to the, or the auditorium for part two of the reflection. We had some pretty well-known high-level speakers in this part. Uh, first, we heard Jacques Duff from the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. And once my Twitter gets up and running again, I'll post excerpts from the talks. Sorry, we've been having some technical difficulties, but I will get everything up eventually, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, next, we heard from the president of Caritas Panama, and third from John Chensuk, who is a program coordinator from Caritas Thailand. Um, Caritas' secretary general, Michel Wa, wrapped things up by saying that moving out of this campaign, which is going to end on December 31st of this year, we should all continue to advocate the idea of food for everyone as a basic human right. And then we broke for lunch, if you can believe we got all that in before lunch. And then after lunch, we broke into working groups to analyze key themes that are part of the strategic framework that I spoke about yesterday. Um, we worked in smaller groups, ma like a maximum of eight people, and I can tell you that the two themes that I attended were the issues of Caritas working on health and HIV AIDS, and also on climate change. Uh, some interesting ideas came up in both. In the health group, I worked with people from Japan, Myanmar, and Lebanon, and we talked about the church's need to come up with a solid and clear definition of their approach to treating uh, HIV and AIDS uh, and addressing that issue. And because of their values, they actually approach the situation kind of differently from other secular NGOs, but Caritas is actually really, really well respected for the spiritual support that they give to people who are affected by HIV AIDS. And that led off to a spin-off conversation uh, that I brought up about the importance of mental health as a, a newer part of humanitarian responses. And I suggested that maybe a good idea moving forward would be to use the spiritual assistance that they're already known for providing as a platform to, you know, after consultation with medical professionals, provide medically grounded mental health treatment as well. Because um, only really recently have people started to pay attention to treating the mental trauma of things like disasters and exclusion and things like that. Um, the climate change group was also really interesting. Uh, there I worked with people from Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and Singapore. And we were saying that people on all levels need to be empowered to address climate change. We all need to act from everyday people to families and communities to industry to government. Everyone has a part to play and everyone needs to know their part and we need to make that clear. And then after all that thinking, uh, we ended the day with mass, this time in English. So I definitely had it under control this time. Uh, I actually was asked to help to bring up a gift for the offering, which was nice. And then we had some dinner and a few of us stayed around to chat for a while into the evening, so that was also really nice. So that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow's a half day of meetings, so the video tomorrow will be shorter. Uh, thanks for hanging in for this long video today. I couldn't part it down because we talked about so much, and if you can believe it, we still have more stuff to talk about tomorrow. Uh, but I will keep you posted about all of that tomorrow. Okay, thanks for watching.
Adamani.